Thanks for joining my video on NAS versus SAN. And this all has to do with storage, and it's something that a lot of different companies are using for on-premises. But there's a lot of confusion between the two, so I hope to clear that up with this video. Let's start out with what is a NAS? Well, NAS stands for Network Attached Storage. And that basically means that it's attached to the network and it allows us to access that storage, typically through shared files. It usually has its own operating system, typically Linux. Microsoft had its own NAS solution for a little while, but unfortunately it did not work out for them, so they ended up uh, ending that support. But uh, typically you'll find most, most, if not all NASs, have Linux as their operating system. It allows you to set up basic permissions. And the permissions are typically read-only, no access, or full access. It's un unlike uh, Windows permissions where you have a lot more granular type of access. And it connects into the switch. So instead of connecting directly into a computer or a server, it'll connect directly into a switch and you'll access that uh, by going from your computer to the switch to the NAS unit. And uh, you can allow all your different computers to access them based on username and password. You can also lock down typically by MAC address, which is the hardware address, or you could uh, lock down by IP address as well. So there's lots of different ways you can secure a NAS, even though you're using the Linux operating system. Other interesting things about network attached storage is that some will link into Active Directory. So you can use permissions on Active Directory using the LDAP protocol, as you see here. Now LDAP basically just allows you to connect into Active Directory, and then you can query the usernames and passwords and use those instead of the basic Linux ones. Then you would typically access the shares using a UNC path or universal naming convention. And what that looks like is the backslash backslash followed by the server name followed by the share name. Now you can also do this by IP address as well as in, in this example using the 1.100 backslash sales folder. So that basically explains the NAS. Now what is a SAN? Well, SAN stands for storage attached network. So instead of attaching the storage into the switch, you're attaching the storage into the server or computer you're connecting to. And it's a direct connection. And this makes things go a lot faster for that particular device to connect to it. When you go through a switch, you're sharing uh, bandwidth with everybody else that's connected to that switch. But when you're connected directly into a device, then you're going to uh, have much faster access. So it can connect through iSCSI, fiber, SAS. These are all different types of cables, basically, with different interfaces uh, and others as well. Which one is the, the best and the fastest? Well, typically fiber is going to be uh, the best uh, because it has the most stable connection and you can crank that speed up into the terabits uh, per second if you wanted to but you'd have to have the interface cards that would work you know, with that which would make that very expensive right now SAS, which is serial attached storage is the slowest type of connection uh, but it's very easy to set up you don't need a lot of special equipment you can just connect into it and it's done iSCSI however is an ethernet connection so you connect an ethernet cable between your storage box and your uh, server or, or workstation whatever it is and um, you you connect to it using an iSCSI connection so that one is uh, a little bit more complicated to set up but it can go as fast as 40 gigabits per second you also need a higher and Ethernet cable than your standard Cat 5e or Cat 6. It shows up as a drive letter after you format it. So when you set up iSCSI, you're going to see this after you format it uh, as a drive letter in your file explorer, uh, just like any other drive letter, like your C drive. So that makes it pretty easy to access. So why would we use a SAN? Well, they're excellent for clustering. So Windows clustering allows us to uh, take two or more computers and share that storage at the same time. So that way, if we have an application such as uh, virtual machines uh, or SQL Server, uh, then we can have them running in a high availability pair. So if one server goes down, the other server continues uh, servicing the clients using that shared storage on the storage area network device. It's also good for backups as well because um, you can get fairly large sized backups and you can swap out the backup devices uh, fairly quickly. Faster access than NAS due to direct connectivity, as I mentioned before. Uh, this one also typically has a Linux operating system for basic configuration. And the type of configuration you're going to see on one of these devices is uh, what IP address do you want this to be able to connect to? Do you want to create a challenge uh, password in order to increase security and add encryption? Um, or do you want to just leave this fairly wide open and just let anybody connect to it? 
Now it can be combined with a NAS, which is really interesting because most lower end devices are both NAS and SAN devices. Sometimes I call them a SANAS, but you know, it's just me. Uh, so the SAN and NAS combo, uh, they're, they're offered in most of these lower end devices. So an example would be a QNAP device and QNAPs can cost anywhere from a few hundred dollars all the way up to say $10,000. Same thing with the Synology. It just depends on how many drives and the size of the drives that you get for the device. And I'm going to show you an example of a QNAP here shortly. Uh, then you've got IBM, Dell, and HP. They typically uh, sell devices that are SAN only, but they'll also get into NAS as well. Uh, you can either choose NAS or SAN or uh, both options. It's really up to you. I'm logged into an IBM SAN right now, and we can see what one of these devices looks like. It's basically a box of hard drives, and it shows all the different hard drives. This particular one has a whole bunch of two terabyte drives, but um, after overhead for RAID and for everything else, it drops it down to about 1.64 terabytes that are usable. And you can configure these in a RAID 5 or RAID 6. Uh, you can mirror them in RAID 1. You could do RAID 0. Uh, lots, of, lots of different things. And then you configure it using these various different side icons here. This is the IBM storage. Um, you can click on volumes, for instance. And we can see that we've got the one large uh, volume is 14 terabytes. And we have a couple of smaller volumes as well as a 739 gigabyte uh, that's part of an SSD pool. So you, what you do is you basically pool your disks together and then you uh, create these uh, volumes out of them. So that's uh, kind of what an IBM uh, SAN is going to look like. This one does not do NAS, uh, but there are some that do. Uh, so typically you're going to see these again on the lower end ones um, that Lenovo is going to carry. So Lenovo and IBM have a partnership going on, Lenovo. So HP and Dell, they're all go also going to have similar types of devices. Now these devices tend to cost a lot more. This one starts at around 10,000 and can get as high as hundreds of thousands of dollars depending on your configuration. Here we have a QNAP, which can do both SAN and NAS. And if I click on the storage and snapshots, then I can take a look that we have two disks. Each one is a six terabyte disk. And down below, we can see the capacity is going to be five terabytes. So clearly we're using a RAID 1. So there's a little bit of overhead as well as um, the other drive is being mirrored. Uh, so we only have about five terabytes of usable space on a two drive setup. If I click on iSCSI and fiber channel, we can see that this is being used for iSCSI storage. There's our connection and we're once again, we see the five terabytes. It's 100% allocated. So we can also set up security here as well if we go into configure this whole thing. I'm not gonna go into the configuration for this. I just wanna expose you a little bit of, of what it looks like. And we can take a look at some other videos uh, in the future where I'll show you how to uh, walk through all these steps if you're interested. So go ahead and put those in the comments. In the control panel, there's a lot of interesting stuff here. We see there's an option for an LDAP server, domain controller. So here we can link in to Active Directory so we can use usernames and passwords from the Active Directory in Windows rather than using local usernames and passwords. And that makes it a lot easier because you don't have to set up an individual username and password for every person. When I go into Privilege Shared Folders, here's where I can set up some, some shared folders in a NAS situation. So in this particular case, we'd have the device plugged into the network switch rather than connected directly into uh, the server. Now you can do both because most of these devices have more than one network card. So you can plug one network card into the server for iSCSI and into the switch for a NAS when you're using the UNC shared folders. Now we don't see any shared folders right now because this device is being used exclusively for iSCSI. Let's take a look at an iSCSI connection. I'm in a Windows server. I'm going to go to Tools and iSCSI Initiator. This is how the Windows server connects into our SAN storage device. So we can see there's a couple of different devices right now that are connected. And if I click on Volumes and Devices, we can see that they're mounted as E, F, and G. So if I go to File Explorer, there's E, F, and G. So we can see that these uh, drives are all iSCSI attached storage using our QNAP SAN. 
So I hope that clears up uh, some of the confusion between a SAN and a NAS and how you can use it uh, by combining or using either or in your organization.